Welcome to Stop Fake, the place where we set the record straight on disinformation about Ukraine. I'm Cynthia Sulash with Stop Fake's latest dissection of Russian alternate reality. This week's stories include two Russian fakes claiming that EU visa-free travel for Ukrainians will be the downfall of the country. We'll also debunk yet another lame attempt to blame Ukraine for the 2014 shooting down of MH17. Let's start digging and get at the truth. Today, the European Union's visa-free travel agreement with Ukraine enters into force. Effective June 11th, Ukrainian nationals who hold biometric passports can travel visa-free to Schengen area countries for up to 90 days within a 180-day period. The welcome development is not making Russian media happy. They have been busy producing fakes about how this new agreement will end very, very badly for Ukraine. The latest fake is a story in RT, Russia's international channel, warning that organizations sponsored by the philanthropist George Soros are warning Ukraine that the EU can cancel visa fee travel for Ukrainians at any time. RIA Novosti, Ukrainia Ru, Lenta Ru, and other Russian media reprinted the RT story, which cites migration research paper prepared by international organizations that are part of George Soros Open Society Institute without naming or linking to the document. The actual research paper was prepared by the Ukrainian NGO Europe Without Barriers and the organization has put out a statement identifying RT's fake story and manipulation of its findings. RT's claim that since 2014, the number of illegal migrants from Ukraine has grown significantly as the number of those denied European visas. But the figure cited by Europe Without Barriers tells a different story. Basing their findings on Eurostat and European Commission data, the official bodies of the European Union, the NGO reports that more than one million visas were issued to Ukrainians in 2016. Nearly half of those were work visas. According to Eurostat, in 2016, nearly 27,000 Ukrainians were in Europe illegally, a small fraction compared to the actual numbers of legal visas issued. The European border agency Frontex says the majority of those outstaying their visas in Europe were detained while returning to Ukraine, a crucial detail that RT fails to mention along with the fact that Ukrainians are increasingly less likely to seek asylum in the European Union. Slightly more than 12,000 sought asylum in 2016, a decrease of over 40 percent compared to 2015. In its hurry to turn out fakes, RT makes outrageous claims that are easily fact-checked. RT claims that Switzerland, Iceland, Norway, and Liechtenstein will not open to Ukrainians without visas. These countries, however, are part of the Schengen Zone, and Ukrainians can now visit them without visas for 90 days. Get with the program, RT. Russia's defense minister channel, Zvezda, also got into the visa fee travel theme and stated that it's doomed for the Ukrainian game in a special report menacingly entitled Visa Fee Travel for Ukraine, Window to Nowhere. The 20-minute piece is a classic of the disinformation genre, a cut-and-paste job of unconnected, aggressive video, menacing music, threatening narration, and doomsday commentary. The report's central message is that visa fee travel for Ukrainians is a conspiracy connoted by the EU and the Ukrainian government to exploit Ukraine and its cheap labor force, buy up its fertile lands, and use the country as a dumping ground for European chemical waste. We won't let you join the EU, but we can let you visit for a while, the narrator declares ominously. The film features several Ukrainians who fled to Russia in the wake of the Maidan revolution as experts expound on Ukraine's future. Among them is self-avowed Stalinist Odessa-born Anatoly Wasserman, a Russian citizen who considers Ukraine to be an indivisible part of Russia and the Ukrainian language to be a Russian dialect. He also advocates legalization of all drugs and believes that the U.S. killed Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez. Another so-called expert is the former Ukrainian game show host Yuri Kot, who hosted pro-government rallies during the Maidan revolution. Kot, now a Russian citizen, lives in Moscow and works for Propagandist Ukrainia Ru website. Yet another expert is former Ukrainian Regions Party MP 
Volodymyr Olnynyk, one of ousted President Viktor Yanukovych's most ardent apologists. He claims visa fee travel will result in millions leaving Ukraine to work in Europe. This is a cheap labor force. This is what Hitler dreamed of, Olnynyk declares. On the other hand, the film claims that ignorant Ukrainians are unaware that visa fee travel does not grant them the right to work in Europe. But on the other, Zvezda experts raise the alarm and predict that millions will leave Ukraine to work in Europe. For a more detailed debunking of the outrageous Zvezda report, visit our website, stopfake.org. Russian sites Sovrashenyo Sikretno, Top Secret, and the Federal Investigation Agency .ru publish stories featuring what they claim are Ukrainian Security Service documents with instructions for destroying the MH17 crash-related evidence. Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 was a scheduled passenger flight from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur that was shot down on July 17, 2014 by a Russian Buk surface to air missile over territory in eastern Ukraine occupied by regular Russian and pro-Moscow separatist forces. While thorough international investigations have shown that the missile that killed 298 civilians and the flight crew, including 80 children was fired by pro-Kremlin forces. This fake Russian story was intended to suggest that Ukrainians have done it and were trying to cover up their traces. This latest fake was reprinted by the usual Russian propagandist media. Even the Russian embassy in Canada featured the fake documents in a tweet. Four photocopied sheets in Ukrainian are filled with grammatical errors and spelling mistakes showing that the Russians who forged it had a bad command of the Ukrainian language. One of the most glaring errors is the code name of the alleged special operation, Katsap, a Ukrainian derogatory term for Russians. We've underlined the errors in red. Several Ukrainian activists have pointed out other blunders in these fake documents in their Facebook posts. Ukrainian Security Service spokeswoman Olenia Hitlianska called these documents outrageous fakes. The names featured in the alleged documents are fictitious and the departments simply do not exist, she said. That's it for this week. Be vigilant. Beware of fakes. If you spot any disinformation about Ukraine, send it to us for a truth autopsy. Remember to stay healthy. Don't consume fake news. Your brain will thank you, and the psychological climate of society will not suffer a precipitous decline. I'm Cynthia Sulash, and this is Stop Fake. Thank you for watching.